On his deathbed in the summer of 597, on the Scottish island of Iona, St. Columba clearly remembered his first monastic settlement, telling his brother monks, I leave my soul to Derry. The St. Columba heritage trail is unique in recalling the connection between Columba and the settlement on the foil beside the oak grove, which gives our city its old Gaelic name, Dura. It focuses on the shared Christian heritage of this ancient place, linking the old walled city of Londonderry with the monastic city of Derry. Please come on a journey of exploration with us. The Church's Trust, which represents the four main churches in the city, decided on this trail as part of its contribution to the culture, heritage and life of the city and to celebrate Derry being awarded the City of Culture in 2013. Architect Alistair Keyes was invited to lead the project and along with artists Elner Wheeler and Niall Bruton, they worked for the best part of a year putting together sculptures, friezes, panels, ceramic tiles, all of which can be seen at various locations along the way. The guiding concept behind their work was to not only reach back to the past, but also to show a city moving forward together. During a tour, Elner Wheeler, seen here, took pilgrims to the start of the trail at St. Columns Park on the waterside to explain the thinking behind the various pieces of visual art that can be seen along the way. Here, as we can see, is located a five metre bass relief frieze that has a functional use as a seat for travellers before setting out on their walk, but also, as Eleanor explains, can be used as a guide for the trail ahead. It is a map, and on it are not only details of all the main sites, but also many of the symbols associated with the life of Columba, not least of which is a dove, which is a constant theme across the entire trail. This is not in any way accidental. The name Columba is a Latin word for dove, and his Gaelic name, Column Kill, means column, dove, and kill of the church. Therefore, he is the dove of the church. The dove has also a wider meaning as a symbol of peace. I am joined uh, by Fiona Fagan, who is the Chief Executive Officer of the Church's Trust. Welcome, Fiona. Uh, you're the group behind this project, this trail. What message would you like the trail to send out? For us, the relevance of developing the Columba Trail was that it was a symbolic linking of the east and west banks of the city. It's an opportunity to bring people through the trail and to visit places of worship of different faith traditions and to realize that they're all very welcoming and very beautiful places to visit. And then finally, that the whole topic of Colombo, the whole trail, is an opportunity for us to share what we have in common. So do you envisage uh, future projects somewhere down the track as well? Absolutely. Yeah. We're, we're about to enter the 1500th anniversary of Colombo, and there's going to be a lot of, you know, opportunities to celebrate his his birth and the legacy that he has left and we certainly will be taking on a number of projects to mark the occasion. One of your mission statements Fiona is uh, that the message of Columba is about peace and reconciliation. How do you think uh, this trail sort of for want of a better term sells that message and uh, how relevant is it 1500 years on? Well it, it's, it sells the message in that it, it's there's a thematic linking between the different sites that are all based on peace symbols. And so that's that's critical throughout. And it links very much with the church's trusts ethos and the fact that we are very much about churches, communities, schools standing together to embrace diversity and to celebrate different cultures. Tourism would be obviously a, a a good money spinner. Do you see uh, uh, this project helping in that regard, or helping the economy by bringing in tourism? This project certainly will. The trail itself has already had some impact and will have more. 
And we, you know, we use this trail, the Colombo message in so many ways. And by way of example, we do a lot of work with young people, young people who are possibly struggling to fit into structured education, who, you know, we, we're looking for creative and alternative pathways to develop their skills and, and for personal development. So we would introduce them to concepts like tour guiding, like how they create beautiful images of their city. And, you know, and, and in that way, it's enhancing people's opportunities to go into the workplace with a variety of options. So what's your hopes and aspirations for this trail in the year and the and the coming year, particularly the 1500th anniversary of Colin Carroll's birth? Well, my hope would be to see it tramped a lot, that there'd be a lot of people yeah. coming through the city and, and taking part in different projects linked with it and, and who explore the who explore the concept of our common Christian heritage and enjoy it. Not least as the pilgrims make their way across the Peace Bridge, after making their way through the old Ebrington barracks, where on the outskirts are located several seat surfaces, which incorporate tile panels made by Elmer with the help of local children. St. Columba used the river to leave the city to spread his message of Christianity and peaceful coexistence. And the crossing of the river is a symbol of his pilgrimage. So 300,000 people walked the Camino in 2017. The numbers have been steadily growing in recent years. Is there a potential for a Camino type uh, trail in this area uh, based on the Columban Trail? Do you think there is uh, enough interest in something like this in this area? Absolutely, there's interest, especially if they can put a roof over Derry and Donegal, it would make a big difference. Um, but yes, I mean, I've walked part of the Camino myself a, a number of years ago, and, and it was a fantastic experience. And in the same way as the Camino in, in Spain, you know, people walk it for religious reasons, but not just for religious reasons. It's for the camaraderie, it's for the community spirit, it's for the enjoying the great outdoors. Um, and I think that absolutely could be achieved here because we have a fantastic potential product uh, in, in a trail for people to, to hike with their friends and just take in. Look, you're the, the manager, as we said, of the Peace4 uh, initiative. What do you see for future projects in this area? Um, I think it'll fit really well in the Peace Plus programme. We do have further European funding hopefully coming. Um, probably not this year but maybe next year um, and I would love to see uh, some involvement from the Church's Trust in, in, in that. I mean, they have handled uh, the, the money and the funding that they've had this time from Europe fantastically well and achieved a great lot of value in, in what we've seen delivered mm -hmm. uh, so I, I would be delighted to be working with them again. Sue Devon from Derry City and Sir Band District Council, thank you very much. Thank you. Geraldine O'Connor, who is the project worker with the Church's Trust. Geraldine, this project is up and running. Now, is there a potential that this can be really developed? And is there a potential for link up with other parts of it, like Iona and so on, down the, down the track? Oh, massive potential, I think, massive. Uh, in fact, um, I joined the Slee Colum Killer Camino on the last leg of the Proof Concept Walk and um, that's been developed at the minute and hopefully we can be involved in that again. Uh, I'm also um, included in a group with uh, Scotland and also I have been in, um, I got in touch with a, a group in Kells and really Columba is being promoted all over the island really and particularly in Derry and Donegal and the trail I would hope will be promoted 
Um, I was involved with uh, peace tourism and um, went through a course, uh, got my tour guide uh, course, completed that. And the plan is um, to maybe train and upskill young people that the Churches Trust works with, maybe to do the tour, to try and promote it globally, that we could maybe uh, provide tours to the tourists that come to Derry, um, maybe advertise it globally. That's, that's in the plan and that's something that we would be very interested in taking forward. But with the upcoming celebrations, there are an awful lot of events. We're planning events for the forthcoming year. Uh, we have a few in the, in the process, uh, processing at the minute, but hopefully we'll have lots more. adjoining the famed walls, the first Derry Presbyterian Church was founded in the city in 1690, when Presbyterians received a grant from Queen Mary in recognition of their part in the Siege of Derry the year before. This current building dates from 1780 and was reopened in 2011 following a major restoration. Here using the concept of Columba the Teacher, Panels were integrated into the floorscape at the entrance of the church. At the base of the steps, old paving slabs were replaced by bands of coloured tiles, while the risers also had ceramic inserts. A bronze dove was sighted at the base of the columns at the main entrance, again illustrating that continuity of the theme of peace. As the artist Elner explains, the detail in the work is based on the items within the church, particularly the stained glass windows, and the overall effect is to draw the eye to the entrance. St Augustine's has a very ancient history. It is in this site that it is believed that Columba erected his first monastery in 546 AD. As far as the church is concerned, the church has been here since then. We've had several burnings and uh, knocking downs. In the 1100s, the church was known as the Dub Reglis, which is the Black Church, and that was because of the robes, the colour of the robes that the, the monks wore. In the 1500s, 1600s, uh, Sir Henry Dockra arrived over from England and rebuilt the church. And it was the same for, for the plantation. And this is where the English and Scottish and Welsh settlers all worshipped. Whenever we uh, look at the church then, it changed its style in the 1700s whenever Bishop Bernard made it into a chapel of ease and it was in a Palladian style. And this precise church itself here was built in 1872 by Bishop William Alexander. And since then, we have had uh, a worshipping, continuing to worship church here. We welcome visitors every year. The symbol of the dove for Columba is, as you can see in the windows, we're very much a worshipping church now, and we welcome visitors uh, of all denominations, and we try to uh, explain a little bit of our ancient history. Here we see those on this part of the trail leaving St. Augustine's, known locally as the Wee Church on the Walls, walking along the fame walls. They are believed to be the last complete circuit walls in Europe and were built over a five-year period between 1613 and 1618 by the Honourable the Irish Society as a defence for the English and Scottish settlers against the native Irish. To get to the Long Tower Church, the pilgrims pass through Bishop's Gate, one of the main gates on the walls, which takes them out of the old city. The Long Tower Church Claim status as the site of Temple Moor, the Great Church, and the ancient Dub Reglis, the Black Church. So there is a dispute between St. Augustine's and the Long Tower as to which was the original site of Columbus' monastic settlement. 
While it's doubtful the issue will ever be resolved, both churches treat the claim with respect and it has deep meaning for both. with the City of Culture in 2013 um, and the celebrations around the anniversary, the celebrations around St Columba, a um, peace-focused project that would be um, using art that would actually create a walking trail across the city. It was, a bit, it was a big challenge. It was a real challenge to have it marry together, the pieces across the city, but I think we managed to pull it off. Um, I hope so. Um, and just a very enjoyable experience. We're here now at St Columbus Stone. This stone lay in St Columbus Wells for hundreds of years. And in 1897, it was the 1300th anniversary of the death of St Columba. The priest at that time was a man called Father Willie Doherty. And Willie Doherty made sure that that day would be commemorated quite largely and what he did was he had a whole celebration here in the church and on the 9th of June and at midnight on the 9th of June he took a group of men and they all descended down into St Columns Wells to where this stone lay and it was a bit of a nuisance to, to ongoing traffic so the council didn't object he dug this stone out it was revered by the local people that this was Columba stone and these mounds were done, were made by Columba all his kneeling, praying. They dug it out and they dragged it up those steps over at the back of the church and they brought it to the sacristy of the old church. And there it lay for a year. And what, during that year, they built the Calvary scene. And at the end of the year, they cemented this stone and to the Calvary scene and it was opened on the 9th of June 1898. We are joined here this morning by Marilyn Skews, Deacon of the Methodist Church. Marilyn, what part of the story of St. Columba do you find particularly interesting? I discovered Columba and I was living in Britain, uh, living in England, studying in England and uh, and I think it it was that sense of resonance of uh, the one who um, uh, whose story was in Ireland and then moved to Scotland and the impact in, in Britain uh, down through Christian history um, just fascinated me uh. and I'm a newcomer to the area um, just last year and uh, so to find that I've actually come <laughs> to Columbus City yeah. and, uh, and discovering um, you know the, the impact of the story which as Columbus the founder of the city um, it's just fascinating and but you have actually walked the trail Marlin yourself haven't you or part of it yes well more recently as a, as a group with the Church's Trust we, we did it and, uh, and I think that was the joining up, starting at the start and um, and going piece by piece along the trail um, was really, really valuable. Do you see the potential for developing the whole story of Columba to, to encompass other parts? Oh, that would be fabulous, wouldn't it? Um, you know, we've obviously got the potential to have the walking trails and and I know work is, is, is going on too, even in this commemoration of his, of his birth. Um, you know, walk walk the trails in Donegal and, and around the city here. Um, but also, yeah, wouldn't that be lovely that, you know, most of us get to Iona um, going through <laughs> yeah. the, the journey into Scotland and travelling up Scotland and, and reaching out to the island. But, you know, we could, and I know that's been, been done at certain times of celebration, you know, where one has, uh, or, you know, a... Uh, a particular pilgrimage by sea has been done to commemorate that but wouldn't it be lovely in, in dreaming dreams for how tourism could be in uh, enhanced here in our beautiful part of the world The 
foundation stone for the church at Carlisle Road was laid in 1901 by the Duchess of Abercorn, and it was opened two years later in May 1903. At the time it was stated it was the most beautiful church in Irish Methodism. Here, Columba the Peacemaker and his links with Ireland and Scotland are celebrated. Colourful glazed ceramic panels have been inserted in the porch of the entrance, with the tiles based on the life of the saint, his care of the sick, the poor and the needy. Passers-by can also see the beautiful artwork, and if you choose to stop and read the motto on the entrance path, it states the church has embodied the mission of being friends to all, enemies of none. We have now come to the end of our journey. Though 15 centuries may have passed, his message today is still as important as it was when he was alive. This trail spells that out. It links the past with the present and gives us all the opportunity to reflect on and to heal the divisions in our community. The route also symbolizes how the city has come together and truly links our past with our future. Anyone who walks this trail can only be aware of the rich heritage of this city. And the great thing about Columba is that he doesn't belong to any one section, but to all of us. He is a unifying figure who carried the message of Christ across ethnic, cultural, religious, and political divides. The church's trust in the city have, as their mission statement, the aim of standing together with a united voice in an area plagued with a legacy of division, aiming to create a shared and better future for all. We think it's a message Columba would have fully endorsed. Enjoy this trail. <laughs>